I've been interested in group A strep for 25 years and, and analysis of the molecular events underlying epidemics. And I got interested in this issue when Jim Henson, the Muppeteer, died of the flesh-eating disease. We've been doing this experiment. The reason it's been so difficult for decades, if not a century, to identify the precise genetic events that contribute to disease emergence is because until 10 years ago, we didn't have the high-end tools to do that. Now we have this technology called next-generation sequencing. We can sequence the entire genome of the bacteria. There exists now uh, very high quality strain samples, and that's necessary because we want to be able to analyze a very large number of strains. And then we also have a very small genome that we can sequence in entirety in thousands of isolates, which we could only do beginning about five years ago. Our hypothesis when we began the research was that uh, there were going to be genetic changes in group A strep that contributed to the epidemics that it caused. So to address that hypothesis, we sequenced the genome of thousands of strains, precisely defining every base pair in the strain. And fortunately, our hypothesis turned out to be correct. There are changes in the germ, the pathogen, that contribute to the epidemics. The surprise was that the changes involved changes in the genes encoding two very potent toxins, streptolysin O and SPN, which is an NADase toxin. The crucial thing is that those two toxins work hand in hand to cause disease in humans. You don't want to have those two toxins made in your body. And they work in part by killing the host cell, the human cells. Similar to every species on Earth is making more of itself and more different members of itself, that's what's happening in group A strep, what we call clonal replacement. The replacement of the old with the new that has a different genetic makeup. And unfortunately, in the case of group A strep, a major pathogen, sometimes by reinventing new forms of itself, it makes a more virulent form of itself. Every gene has what's called a regulatory region. It is involved in how genes are transcribed and how proteins are made. The changes that have occurred with group A strep involve changes in the regulatory region, and that results in increased production of streptolysin O and NADase. So it's really not so much mutations within the gene itself, but they're actually in the regulatory part of the gene. We now no longer have to guess what factors are contributing to these epidemics. We now can precisely define at the individual nucleotide level the molecular genetic events that are contributing to the group A strep epidemics. We collaborated with people from Finland, from Iceland, from Norway, from Denmark, from many different regions of the world, including the Centers for Disease Control in the U.S. It's only by this tremendous collaborative venture that we launched into that we're able to make these discoveries. I'm just the spokesmodel for a lot of very hardworking researchers in my laboratory that really do this work. They're doing all the hard work on a day-in, day-out basis. Group A strep is just a model organism. This gives us a roadmap to begin to think about how to study other organisms as well. One of the implications from a public health standpoint is by doing this in the real-time space, we can now begin to potentially identify very early in an epidemic that a change has occurred in the organism and use that information to humankind's benefit in developing therapeutics, 
new ways to test for these infectious agents and new ways potentially to prevent or at least to dampen epidemics.